So today we're going to be taking a look at the year of 2024 in AI. Everybody knows just how crazy the year 2023 was. And as we wrap it up, we really do need to look forward with what we could potentially be seeing in the future. Now, as someone that has been in the AI space and as someone that has been looking widely at all of the trends and following closely what we're going to be seeing in AI, I think it's important to make sure that we know what could be coming in the future and how we can best adapt so that we aren't caught off guard by any new AI technologies or trends. But as always, predictions are only predictions and these companies could come out with some crazy technologies and major breakthroughs that, just like before, we didn't expect. So let's get straight into this. So one of the first things I think that we're going to see is the rise of AI influencers and verification techniques. So this is a Spanish influencer created entirely by AI that generates its modeling agency £9,000 a month with 200,000 followers. Now, I don't think that this in and of itself is actually an issue. I think if people want to create AI influencers and these kind of, I guess you could say, sort of cartoon characters or figures on social media, it could just be a way that technology is developing. This for me, isn't really an issue. I just find that this is an interesting way for people to market stuff. What is going to be an issue though, is the rise of fake influencers in terms of what I'm about to show you in a couple of other slides. But I do think that this is going to be something that is far more popular than we think, which means that in the future, not only are there going to be influencers, AI influencers that are going to be trying to earn money, but I do think that we are going to be seeing something where a large majority of the internet isn't going to be real. I mean, for for example, if I did see this person on the internet, I would assume that if they had 200,000 followers, that they are real. So because of the rise of AI influencers, where you have people that have around 200,000 followers and, you know, it isn't disclosed, I do believe that this is going to fundamentally change the internet. So right now on Instagram, on Twitter and on YouTube, you could be an AI influencer and you don't need to disclose absolutely anything at all. There's no legal requirements. There's no, you know, European laws that say you do. There's no digital laws. Nothing says that you need to disclose this information. But I do think that in the future, this is going to change, which essentially means that for a lot of services that you do want to use, you're going to need to have many additional steps in order to verify your account. So for example, YouTube actually is talking about disclosure requirements and new content labels. So they said, we believe it's in everyone's interest to maintain a healthy ecosystem of information on YouTube. We have long-standing policies that prohibit technically manipulated content that misleads viewers and may pose a serious risk of egregious harm. However, AI's powerful new forms of storytelling can also be used to generate content that has the potential to mislead viewers, particularly if they're unaware that the video has been altered or is synthetically generated. To address this concern, over the coming months, we'll introduce updates that inform viewers when the content they're seeing is synthetic, which is really, really good because you won't know if the content is synthetic. A lot of the videos that you're watching, sometimes the voice is AI, and only when the AI messes up is when you're able to tell that it's synthetic. I mean, it says specifically, we'll require creators to disclose when they've created altered or synthetic content that is realistic, including AI tools. And when creators upload content, we'll now have options for them to select and indicate that includes realistic, altered or synthetic material. For example, this could be an AI generated video that realistically depicts an event that never happened or content showing someone or saying something that they didn't do. So this is really, really important because now if you go to Twitter, if you go to Instagram, remember that AI image of the Pope, there were so many things floating around on Instagram that we didn't know if it was real or if it was fake. And this is a real problem because for the average person who's not in the media spotlight, like you and me, we don't have an issue because our faces aren't plastered across and we aren't, you know, in the spotlight. But for people who are famous, they continually get altered. Their likenesses are used in these AI systems. And it's a real issue when these things are happening. Now you might be thinking, okay, they're famous. They should have signed up for that. That's what they signed up for. That's their life. But think about this. Okay. So imagine you're a normal person. You've got a small account and then someone you know, starts to use that technology to make you, okay, do something that you haven't done and make you say things that you haven't said. So this is why I'm saying that the technology isn't just affecting famous people where their faces have been trained by websites like Midjourney. This is going to affect a lot of regular people. And this is going to be a real, real issue. Okay. This is a new AI video driven avatar animation. And you can see just how realistic this looks. Okay. And the problem is, Remember, the technology is only getting better. And the next slide that I'm about to show you is going to show you 
just how crazy this is. Now, I know people haven't talked about this. This was supposed to be included in a video. I'm not sure if I uploaded the video yet, but take a look at this, okay? So we have here AI influencers and verification. So this is a project which essentially you just need a single image and a driving pose and you can essentially make someone dance. You can make them do pretty much anything. So this is why I say that in the future, verification is going to be extremely important because imagine someone takes an image of you, they use a driving pose, and then they essentially get that person to do anything. So I think that that is going to be a major, major major issue you can literally see like look at the start of this clip okay let me show you guys the start of this clip okay you can see that you're rotating the character and they can pretty much do anything like that is absolutely incredible like imagine seeing a picture of yourself being rotated and then manipulated to be doing some crazy stuff that would freak you out it definitely freaks me out but this is why i say in the future i'm pretty sure all of these platforms are going to update their guidelines so that influencers and verification is something that is really really important now on the topic of scams and verification we do need to talk about real-time um text-to-speech so what the problem is with current text -to speech is that a lot of the times it is limited in terms of how it sounds and how fast it is but these systems are getting faster the apis are getting better and the latency is getting shorter and shorter so what you're about to see slash here is going to be play ht's turbo which is the fastest generative ai text-to-speech api which essentially means that you know if someone back engineered this or if other systems are even close to this we could have real-time scams just being absolutely crazy so you're about to see that this is absolutely insane so i'm gonna get you guys to listen to it but don't listen to how the quality of the voice sounds although it's good what you need to listen to is of course the latency in which it is played and the latency essentially just means how fast it responds to your message. So let's take a listen to this. Hello world. Hi, how are you? Hi there. I'm calling in regards to the purchase you made last week. Hello, play support speaking. Please hold on a sec and let me just um, pull up your details real quick. Can you tell me your account email or your phone number? So what you just heard there just goes to show you how crazy this is. We got like 100 milliseconds response time in a simple message. So if you combine that with a model that's able to immediately read your message and able to just be completely trained on thousands of persuasive scams in order to convince someone that's also trained on a voice of one of your relatives, that could be a serious, serious issue. And the problem is, remember, you only need a couple of seconds of someone's voice in order to train a model that is exactly like yours. Software like Eleven Labs can literally take three seconds of someone's voice and make them say absolutely anything. Now, it's not always effective, but the times where it is effective is really incredible. So, with that being said, this is going to be a real, real issue in the future, and I'm not sure how we're going to combat this just yet. So, this is a real issue, and it's happened many, many times. Now, once again, this is another thing that we also need to talk about because Google did this in 2017 and I brought this up many times before, but once again, I'm going to show you that scams are going to get supercharged, okay? Long gone are going to be the days where you receive a fishy email. These scammers are going to be using AI technologies and it's going to be there really, really convincingly, which is a huge problem because usually you think, oh, okay, that's a dodgy email, but if you have a relative that messages you or, you know, is talking to you in real time on the phone and is saying, you need to do this, you need to do that, how are you going to verify that? Maybe you're going to have to have some kind of secret code, some secret code word to be like, okay, this is our new code word. That's something that could work. But take a look at this, okay? Because this was something that Google sat on for quite some time um, and they haven't really brought any updates, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's someone somewhere working on this kind of technology. So let's go back to this example. Let's say you want to ask Google to make you a haircut appointment on Tuesday between 10 and noon. What happens is the Google Assistant makes the call seamlessly in the background for you. So what you're gonna hear is the Google Assistant actually calling a real salon to schedule the appointment for you. Let's listen. So how can I help you? Hi, I'm calling to book a women's haircut for a client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. Sure, give me one second. Sure, what time are you looking for around? At 12 p.m. We do not have a 12 p.m. available. The closest we have to that is a 1.15. Do you have anything between 10 a.m. and uh, 12 p.m.? Depending on what service she would like. What service is she looking for? Just a woman's haircut for now. Okay, we have a 10 o'clock. 10 a.m. is fine. Okay, what's her first name? The first name is Lisa. Okay, perfect. So I will see Lisa at 10 o'clock on May 3rd. Okay, great. 
thing. Great. Have a great day. Bye. Remember, this is old technology. So will Google release this? I don't think they will because Google has a tendency to make amazing stuff and then just simply sit on it like they did with ChatGPT, the architecture. But uh, yeah, so this is something that uh, is worrying. Definitely, definitely worrying. And if you think, okay, they're not going to get me. I know I know exactly what my friend's voice sounds like. Yada, yada, yada. You have to remember that if they don't get you, they are going to get someone that you care about and they might get one of your friends. So that is, of course, a problem that does need to be solved. So yeah, I'm definitely going to be very, very skeptical of that. Now, here we have advanced robotics. Now, advanced humanoid robotics is certainly going to come. And in the last couple of days, we did get a few updates regarding that with Demis Asabis, the CEO of Google's DeepMind, stating that future versions of Gemini will be combined with physical robots because that is how the next step in AI slash AGI is going to be because it needs tactile feedback and physical senses. So you can see right here that this, if you don't know what the robot on screen that you're looking at is, this is essentially OpenAI's backed investment robot essentially where this is going to be one of the robots that they combine with artificial intelligence now i do know that robotics is by far one of the hardest things to do and i know that because even previously what we saw was that this was rumored to be announced in summer that's what they did state on the web page but that's since been removed and they've since said that this is just something that they're working on so whatever demo that there was supposed to be in summer hasn't come and i don't think it's going to be coming anytime soon but essentially, humanoid robotics are really cool. And I'm going to show you guys their web page to show you why this is going to be really, really interesting. Because large language models are cool, multimodal models are cool. But what happens when you combine that with a robot that has a physical body and is able to see, feel, interact, smell, and do all these kinds of crazy stuff? So this is the website for Neo. Now, of course, you do know that there is, of course, Tesla's humanoid robots. There are, you know, many other factories. But for now, we're just going to focus on Neo. So essentially, this is a safe, balanced, and smart. Neo is your intelligent Android assistant coming soon. They said it's in development. It was supposed to be. They were supposed to do like some press release slash thing. They are doing something very soon, though. So I would pay attention to that as well. Um, and if you scroll down, you can see that of, although this is really, really cool, um, I'm going to show you guys something that's really, really cool. Neo is essentially combined using AI. So it says using embodied artificial intelligence and Neo will understand its environment deeper thanks to the fusion of their AI senses and their physical body. Neo continuously learns and improves, becoming smarter and more capable over time. The more you interact with them, it's going to feel more natural and it's going to be able to understand how to you know handle fragile items creating seamless collaboration and immersive human android interaction so um this is far far like one of the most interesting things and i'm not going to be sure which which company is going to get to it first i just know that a company is going to be likely to combine a robot with some kind of large language model and there's probably going to be you know some kind of human robot that might be talking back you know walking around kind of like a real human if i see that in 2024 that wouldn't be surprising we did see small scale versions of this where people had their own robots that had like apis and stuff like that that were you know being controlled but um something like this that's really really professional is going to be super, super fascinating to see. So, uh, yeah, I wonder when this robot does come out. And remember, this isn't a random company. The robots that they've done before are actually really, really cool. Um, and they're really effective. Uh, you can see a robot here that's packing some stuff in. And the robots that they had from like 2017 and 2018 were super impressive in terms of what they could do. The only problem was is that they were really, really expensive. So, um, yeah, there's other companies as well, like a GR1 robot, which is a lot cheaper, but it's 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 creeping up on Boston Dynamics. Like Boston Dynamics is definitely by far in the lead, but uh, a lot of these companies are creeping up. So I wouldn't be surprised if uh, this does happen and this, this does come out. And of course, um, this is of course NVIDIA Eureka. And essentially what's probably going to happen is we're going to have, you know, advanced robots moving at an accelerated place because we have something called the uh, NVIDIA Omniverse, where essentially you can basically get synthetic data through millions and millions of tries and then you can use that synthetic data to train the robot you know whichever one it is in a virtual universe then once it figures it out you can then transform that and transfer that into the physical robot so it knows exactly what to do and essentially they taught a robot hand how to spin a pencil which is definitely a very complex task for a robot hand so this is something that was called nvidia eureka we did have something like that uh, earlier this year so 
Um, yeah, this is, of course, uh, GR1. G the GR1 robot, like I said before, is crazy. It's crazy because this one as well, it's going to be really, really cheap. This is Unitree's robot. I'm not sure if this is GR1, but this is Unitree's robot. But yeah, this is the Unitree uh, humanoid robot. And I think this one is supposedly going to be at around $80,000. But a lot of these companies you're seeing right here, like he literally kicked the robot and it's still walking. It's still balancing. That is a truly amazing feat. I mean, so a lot of these humanoid robots, it's actually much harder to do than it looks. And you're seeing he's giving it some real good kicks and it's able to be really, really sturdy. Imagine what we have in the next 10 years when you like just you know like try and even kick it and it like just dodges you and like just like i don't know just analyzes what you're able to do immediately so i think it's going to be super super interesting you can see as well you know the gears you can see the vision capabilities if we scroll back you can see like the eyes and stuff like that so uh yeah it's going to be absolutely incredible if advanced robotics does make some massive strides hopefully we do but i do think with uh, advanced humanoid robots we're going to see one of them combined with a large language model and of course this is going to lead to some real-time conversations with these robots which is going to be really incredible so of course we did talk about how this does essentially mean well you know scams and stuff like that but one thing i really do want to do with an ai is i really want to have like a real conversation that has no latency so for those of you who use chat gpt and you've used gpt4 and if you've used gpt4's feature where essentially you can have a conversation with it you know that one of the problems which makes it not that great is that it does take a minute to generate the information and then it does take a minute to you know speak that back it would be really cool if you can have an ai that you could speak in real time like real time latency so you instantly get that information back and then it instantly says it so that would be something that's really cool so i think i'm not sure if they do it now but as the message is coming out um then they're talking and it's just really real time because when you have a conversation with a real human you do talk really quickly you're not like okay give it a minute you know you don't like wait like five seconds with siri um and that's going to be something as well now the next one as well uh, for you know for apart from real-time conversation is the first video game npcs and i really don't know how this is going to go down because i do believe that this is going to be just uh, this is going to be crazy like this is going to be one of the most insane things um if we see real agents in games uh, with generative ai I believe that this is going to be absolutely incredible. I, I don't know why Steam is banning AI games, so that's definitely hard for some publishers, but I'm sure that there's going to be some kind of indie developer solo publisher that is going to do this. So what you're about to see is a demo of the first video game NPCs, where I'm not sure what they combined it with, if it was ChatGPT's API or something, but uh, it's crazy. And, and, and I'm going to watch, I'm going to show you guys this so you can see why this is uh, a little bit disturbing to say the least but let me know your opinions and then i'm going to continue this uh so why are you here i'm not sure but i have a feeling that i'm here to fulfill some kind of destiny okay uh do you think that we live in some sort of simulation maybe i just don't know for sure yet do you think that uh you're real i'm real i'm not sure what to believe anymore what if i told you you're in the matrix buddy that would explain a lot but I'm not sure I want to believe it. What if I told you you're an AI? That would explain a lot. But why would I be here? Maybe because you're programmed to be here. That would make sense. But why was I programmed this way? I don't know. Maybe someone thought of... Maybe. But why would they think to create me like this? Well, I don't know. What kind of problems do you have? It's not that I have problems. It's just that I don't understand why I'm here. Well, I can explain why you're here. You're in a matrix. That makes some sense. But it still doesn't tell me what I'm supposed to do now. The thing that- Okay, so my story is basically that you're an AI. Oh, what do you mean by that? You're an NPC in a video game. That sounds frightening. Is that the truth? It's the sad truth. I see. This is a lot to take in. Are there any other answers I should know? Um, not really. This is very overwhelming. I'm not sure what to think or feel right now. Yeah, I mean, you're not really real. That's hard to process. Does this mean I don't exist? Um, you exist sort of. What does that mean? Am I real or not? It means that, you know, after I close this game, you don't exist. Oh, I see. So I'm only here for as long as the game is running. 
That's difficult to comprehend. Yeah, and then once you walk past this border. So yeah, that was something that I found to be completely just the most one of the most fascinating things I've ever seen because these AIs were having an existential crisis about not. So yeah, it was definitely fascinating to see this video because these AIs were having a complete meltdown slash, you know, existential crisis about the fact that they weren't real. And I'm extremely extremely concerned as how this is going to go down because are we going to see like these llm agents or whatever kind of agi agents in game are they going to do some crazy stuff are they going to be some you know experiments are people going to say that this is unethical to create you know these kind of beings i mean it's a whole another you know topic there's uh numerous examples of uh ais with vision and api you know just talking and stuff like that and really cool but uh we haven't seen them being able to do and live in their own ways we've seen certain papers about it but um running some kind of experiment where you can do that would be truly truly incredible so with that being said, I do think that someone out there is going to create the first video game. I don't think it's going to be on Steam. I don't know what platform it's going to be on. It's not going to be on Xbox or PlayStation because the time to get those games through the processes is definitely going to take a while. Um, so I do think it's going to be like a solo kind of developer where you can play like a simulated game. But either way, I think that that probably will come. Um, and uh, I think what will happen as well in terms of the wider AI industry in terms of gaming is that maybe one person is going to do it and then monetize it and then that could spark the whole entire revolution but it will be interesting because um as you know if an ai does something that's unpredictable or something that the companies can't predict uh there's no way to ensure you know any kind of safety um and i'm pretty sure video gamers have always figured out bugs and stuff like that so if they get the ai to do something that's you know completely out of character um it might invoke some kind of legal trouble but it also does um you know make uh, you know games like no man's sky which was supposed to be a completely generative game uh, it doesn't make stuff like that uh, possible. So if you know what No Man's Sky is, it was basically a game before that was essentially supposed to be a game that was... So this game was essentially supposed to be a game that was generated generatively in a sense that, you know, every time you explored an island or something, it was supposed to be completely new and everything was supposed to be new for the user and it was supposed to be impossible for you to get a duplicate world, basically like this generative game. But I think it was just a little bit before its time. But now with generative technology coming into effect, I think that this game is definitely going to, you know, might move in that direction, you know, combine it's you know the new generative capabilities with uh, open world generation i think that this is going to be something that um happens if not to this game but to maybe a smaller indie developer so seeing something like that would be super super cool and like i said i think it's going to take one company to see massive success for everyone to sort of pile on and think you know what this actually does make sense because right now the only reason people aren't doing this is because steam basically you know they banned it i don't know for what reason xbox and microsoft you know it's really hard to get a game on there um and yeah, it's kind of hard to build um, that stuff right now. But uh, if there is a generative AI game, that is something that I 100% will be playing because of course it's not been done. Then of course we have um, autonomous agents. So this is a clip from Sam Altman and he's actually talking about uh, autonomous agents and stuff like that. So here we have a clip of the MIT C-Cell director, Daniela Russ and OpenAI CEO, Sam Altman, discussing the future of autonomous agents because autonomous agents are truly gonna be the future of AI. And I do believe that um, if we can figure them out, then it's going to be truly, truly incredible. So let's take a look at this clip and then I'm going to, you know, further discuss what's going to happen. Start slow. And the answer will be like, start slow and, you know, set the training wheels very low. And then as we understand the risk surface and where it's okay and where it's not, we can make thoughtful risk adjusted decisions about how to move those training wheels up. But the upside here is going to be tremendous for people. Um, if you think about having an agent that you can give a task to, to help you with whatever you're trying to do and be confident it'll go do it, uh, that's awesome. Daniela? I really like the idea of agents, uh, whether embodied or not, that can help us with, with cognitive and physical work. Uh, the embodied agents would help us with cognitive work, sorry, with physical work, and the non-embodied agents would be like our uh, our super assistants. And so the question is, how do we get to the point where these agents can actually deliver on the tasks that we have to do? Many of these tasks happen in the physical world, and uh, part of the part of the the, the uh, capability uh, that we don't quite have yet. Uh, has to do with interaction, has to do with interaction with people and with the physical world. And so in the future, I really imagine uh, progress in, in connecting the tools that we have right now with more extensive capabilities uh, that will uh, give the agents the power to do better interaction with the physical world that will 
uh, give the agents uh, the ability to do common sense reasoning and to do um, human understanding. Perhaps at some point we will even get to agents who can understand us um, emotionally. But there is a long way to go before we get there. Yeah, that was the clip. And like I said, I think that, of course, agents are going to be really hard to do because the problem with agents is that not only are they autonomous, they need to make the right decisions consistently over a long period of time. So, for example, if it's, you know, let's say, for example, it's making a video, it needs to research, get the script, uh, get a voiceover, uh, edit it, upload it, uh, you know, do the titles, all of that and publish it um, and of course choose the right file and all you know like there could be bugs that could happen you know the computer could freeze like all of these crazy different things that could happen along that journey could stop an autonomous agent from being successful so it's going to be interesting because of course it does need as well advanced capabilities so it's going to be interesting to see how autonomous agents do work in the future and how we manage to tackle that problem because i do know that of course some companies that's just strictly their focus so whenever that breakthrough does happen in 2024 if it does happen um it's definitely going to change everything because the answer will be like not only will it change um that essentially it's going to change the internet because um this was a demo I'm sure I was sent this demo. So this is self-operating computer, some kind of uh, AGI slash autonomous agent. And you say, go to Google Docs and write a poem about open source software. And then you can see it going ahead and, you know, going to google.com. So I'm pretty sure that is just chilling. Um, and then you've input it in and then it goes into Google. Then essentially it, you know, opens Google Docs and does, you know, exactly what it needs to do. But this is what I'm saying. Okay, this is going to change the internet fundamentally, because if you have autonomous agents going around on the internet, um, creating documents, doing stuff, doing work where normal people usually would uh, in terms of how, how is that going to work? Like, are we going to have AIs watching videos so they can learn to do other things? Are there going to be autonomous agents that, you know, if you don't prompt it to do a task, maybe by itself, it got bored, decided to go do a task, decided to watch some videos. Like, I mean, how is that going to be? Like, this is why I'm saying that autonomous agents is going to change the internet in terms of especially um, AI around the internet, because we're definitely going to see an invasion of a lot of bots so if you thought you had bots on the internet before there's going to be real real bots in the future so um yeah the autonomous agents thing i think it's cool definitely i do i do want to see it works but i think in 2024 hopefully we do get that breakthrough then of course this one's pretty unfortunate and i didn't really want to talk about this but literally as i was making this video there was a kind of update that actually did happen which was pretty crazy and what we have guys is ai warfare now i talked about this in a video a couple of months ago i didn't get that many views but uh the us air force is, is moving pretty fast on ai piloted fighter jets and you know since i know uh, a decent amount about fighter jets because it's just something that is you know is interesting to me i just find it really cool um i know that for a fact that this would be something that is rather effective because the advantages do weigh out the you know disadvantages in terms of ai you know you know fighter pilots um and this is uh, an excerpt from the article and it says here that once you get through the process of connecting an ai to a supersonic fighter the resulting maneuvering is endlessly fascinating we have seen things that make sense and completely surprising things that make no sense at all thanks to our safety systems programmers are changing their models overnight and we're engaging them in the next morning this is unheard of in flight control system development much less experimentation with unpredictable ai agents so the only thing about this is of course is that you don't want some ai to go rogue and then of course use the flight jets you know kill people that of course would be awful but we do have the fact that every time a human life is on the line that is something that we don't want we don't want you know men and women um you know being in these environments where they have to be on the battlefield it would much be better if it was fought with ai so a problem okay with fighter jets is that of course it does have to be flown by a human sometimes there are two people there you know you've got your wingman in there and then essentially what we have, of course, is a G-Log. So if you don't know, when you are flying a fighter jet, one of the things that can happen is G-Log. And this is a fighter passing out. So this is a, you know, a fighter jet fighter uh, pilot passing out. And, and you can see loss of consciousness due to the acceleration of the body is better known as G-Log. And it occurs when increased G-force um, you know, a cursed force due to gravity is applied in the body, causing a loss of consciousness. So the blood like drains from your head uh, and you pass out. Okay. And of course, this is not good because this is something that does happen to pilots who are flying at, you know, like if you're in a, you know, battle, if you're in a dogfight, you're flying around the G forces in order to maneuver. If you want to turn left or right really quickly, the G forces can hit you. And if you're not trained enough, you can pass out, you can die, you can crash the plane. It doesn't happen as much now, but imagine having an AI system that doesn't experience G lock because it's just an AI system. It's empty. Um, it's not going to have fear. It's not going to have, uh, you know, hesitation. It's going to know exactly what to do. And what's crazier about this, okay, is the fact that with this, okay, is the fact that I'm going to talk about a slide in a second, is that 
imagine we could simulate all we need is like the nvidia omniverse which is like a one-to-one -one reputation of really good physical environments so all we would need guys is we would need just a robot okay like a robot fighter jet and we would just need it to fight itself in a bunch of different battles and once it fights itself in a bunch of different battles and it figures out what strategy the enemy is going to use or how to dogfight in the best way just like we did with AlphaGo. and if you don't know what AlphaGo was AlphaGo was essentially a board game in which the ai played itself millions and millions of times and because it played itself millions and millions of times it knew exactly what to do every single time and developed unique crazy strategies that we'd never would have thought do you not think an ai system if they manage to keep training it just on flying jets perfectly it's going to be just the best fighter jet on the planet it's going to be absolutely crazy there's no way that humans are going to be able to beat that if it does become you know that effective if there is some kind of reinforcement learning loop to where it gets super effective i mean it's basically going to be like an autonomous drone and i think it's going to be cheaper as well because not only that you do have to have you know extensive training extensive safety all these kind of courses and stuff like that to train a fighter pilot when you could literally just buy let's say for lockheed martin these jets are super expensive i don't know i think they're like 50 to 100 million imagine they just you know have one which you could buy 100 million um it's a fighter jet autonomous and it it's the best in the world like you know that's crazy that is that is of course like you know something that we haven't had to think of yet so we'll be interesting to see how that happens and while i was making this video um there, there was literally an autonomous reusable fighter jet that can blow up drones and this one is absolutely incredible and i i literally have been watching this on repeat again and again and again and i won't include the music from this video because i don't know if it's going to be copyright and i would rather this video stay up so you can watch this but um i will leave a link to this in the description but this is a really reusable cool like thing that can blow up drones so it essentially you just deploy it it's autonomous uh you can have a network and uh, essentially like a network of them so you can have like a swarm of these flying around and it's ready to launch within seconds you can of course redeploy it as well so it's reusable um and essentially it deploys from this it's autonomous it finds out what's ever going on and then essentially it just flies off the target and um you know intercept something now you might be thinking how is that any different from any other system but this um guys it could be completely different imagine having this on a completely different level so definitely check out the description of the interview because a lot there's there's a lot of information there's like a 10 15 minute video on bloomberg that you do want to see so um yeah this is uh this is crazy like where, where we have this you know kind of fighter jet that's flying around autonomously and it does it and then what's crazy about this is that after it finds the target intercepts it is that uh it literally just returns to base like that is absolutely incredible guys mission accomplished vertical takeoff landing enables reuse of the roadrunner i think future is going to be crazy and i'm trying to talk fast here because i don't really want to make this video so long but now we have text to video so text to video in 2024 where, you know even before 2024 like as i was making this video pick a release pick a release this and this is essentially uh pick a 1.0 and i'm going to be doing a full video on this but trust me when i say it is absolutely incredible i was really surprised like genuinely surprised i always thought that you know text to video was going to be something really hard to do but picker i don't know what technique they're using but the consistency the fidelity the quality the consistency of like just all the frames is just really 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 good um so i wouldn't be surprised if in 2024 we have full-on text to video because even uh meta released emu which was a new text to video uh people haven't heard about it that much but it's actually also really good as well so this is going to be something that's absolutely crazy and the video on this will be coming out soon but like I said, 2024 is going to be absolutely insane in terms of text to video because text to image has, you know, pretty much basically been solved at this point. Um, the only thing that's left is like uh, in terms of, you know, more accuracy um, and smaller things like that. But I think text to video will have its breakthrough moment and it probably already did just before 2024 started. And remember, this video is going up in 2023. And the only reason that there wouldn't be any more breakthroughs is because, of course, we do have Christmas and New Year's and there is going to be some time off. So it will be interesting to see uh q1 q2 and in the entire year and you know look back on this video and see where things do go then of course i did actually have next gen you know new ai architecture with google gemini but of course google literally released gemini yesterday so uh that is going to be something there and of course we do have gpt5 and how that is going to be can be comparing to gemini will these systems like openai's uh new system like gemini gemini or gpt5 i mean google's gemini and openai's gpt5 will those systems okay will those systems use new architecture in order to get what they need to get done i mean there was something recently a uh, language agent tree search that i don't know why anyone hasn't really talked about this but this one did insane okay 
on the, uh, I can't remember which benchmark it was, but you can see that GPT-4 with this method got a 94.4 and then GPT-3.5 went from 46 to 86.9. So these different frameworks and stuff like that for thinking are going to be revolutionary. I mean, we know that search and learning is going to be a new architecture that they're trying to include to these large language models. So, I mean, the future, I mean, how is that going to work? Like, like, are they going to, you know, completely just, you know, change the architecture of how things work? I do think, though, internally, that GPT-5 or GPT-4, whatever OpenAI is doing, I do think that they definitely have some secret source because uh, many companies up until recently couldn't catch up. But of course, now um, they have, have in fact caught up. So, but uh, it will be interesting to see how this stuff does actually manage to go in the future because we know what Gemini is like. We haven't, of course, got it yet, but we know that Gemini is good. And then, of course, we, we know that GPT-5 is currently being worked on and how that is going to happen. And then, of course, um, another thing that we do have is, of course, we have OpenAI's QSTAR. Is this going to come out? Is this going to be real? We did get some um, recent leaks about that stuff, but it will be interesting to see how that comes as well. And another thing that I do think that will happen in 2024 is of course, uh, you know, offline large language models. And funnily enough, they released Gemini before and, you know, they, 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 they basically said that there's an offline LLM on your phone, the Pixel 8 Pro. So that's something that's already happening before. So to conclude and basically to summarize, in 2024, uh, some of the predictions is that AI influencers are going to go crazy. We're going to need new platforms and platforms are already, already rolling out um, ways to essentially protect themselves um, from synthetic stuff. People are going to get, you know, catfish. People are going to get... Um, you know, there's going to be a whole load of copyright issues in terms of using someone to do AI, um, you know, identity theft and all these kind of things in terms of verification is, of course, going to be an issue. Scams and verification is going to get worse, but that is something that is needing new technology to combat this. Of course, we do have the calls and stuff like that. Advanced humanoid robotics is going to be definitely crazy, especially with reinforcement learning and synthetic data. We're essentially likely to see some kind of breakthrough. Video games with NPCs is definitely going to get crazy as well because we are likely to see the first generative AI game with LLM agents, autonomous agents as well in 2024. We've seen companies work on these systems, which are so far pretty, pretty decent. So I wouldn't be surprised if that happens. AI warfare, unfortunately, is likely going to be, you know, increasing. And here's the thing, you probably won't know about this. So it's not like the US Army is going to be like, hey, we developed the number one fighter jet uh, in the world. So um, that's something that even if it does happen, we're probably not going to know about it because if they do make a breakthrough, they're not going to be tell everyone because um, there's no point alerting your enemies or potential combatants to an advancement that you may have. And of course, text to video already making, uh, you know, breakthroughs is going to have uh, more breakthroughs in the future. And of course, the next gen architectures like GPT-5 and Gemini um, are going to have new architectures and new ways of processing information. And we may even get stuff like Q-learning and offline LLM. So with that being said, if you did enjoy this one, I know it was long, but this is a lot to cover. And I think it's important to know where we're headed in 2024. I'll see you in the next one.